May I welcome you all most warmly to this graduation ceremony for the University of London International Programmes. This is the eighth year running in which the graduation ceremony is being held in the splendid surroundings of the Barbican Centre, which, as it happens, celebrates its 25th anniversary this year. I'm very pleased to declare this ceremony open. Those graduating today come from all over the world. That international reach has been one of the most compelling features of the external system, which is the previous name for international programmes, since it began over 154 years ago. What is often forgotten is just how important international programmes has also been for students here in the United Kingdom. As a consequence, some 30% of all of you graduating today come from the United Kingdom. But that means that 70% are from other countries, and I offer you all a particularly special welcome. For many of you, this will be your first visit to London. And of course, 2012 is a particularly significant year for London, in which you have made your journey here. This Barbican Centre celebrates its 25th anniversary, but we are above all celebrating the Diamond Jubilee of Her Majesty the Queen and hosting the world's most important international sporting event, the Olympic Games, London 2012. There is no denying that London is one of the most international of all cities, with about 350 different first languages spoken by its residents. It is a vibrant, exciting city that thrives on the diversity of its people. That diversity is one reason why London warmly welcomes all its visitors, and I hope that you and your guests enjoy your stay here. At the heart of this culturally diverse city, we have the University of London, which is a federation of 18 autonomous colleges with which many of you will have come into contact while undertaking your programme of study. All 18 have major international reputations in their fields, and those reputations sustain the global reputation of the university as a whole. As the head of one of those colleges, Goldsmiths, and now as Vice-Chancellor of the University, I have been active ensuring, in ensuring that the University of London remains the global force that it is today, and that it sustains the global reputation that has made wi you wish to study for its degrees. The size and the global reach of international programmes some is something of which we are all very proud. But in the years to come, I feel sure that it has the capacity to grow even further in the number of its students, their geographical range, and above all, their impact on their own countries and the global society that affects us all. Under the inspiring leadership of Professor Jonathan Kidd, the Dean of the International Programmes, and Mr Andrew Bollington, its Chief Operating Officer, I know that that will be achieved. And under their leadership, this year has already proved to be an excellent one for the University of London external, uh, International Programmes. The Quality Assurance Agency for England visited in 2011 to look at the way international programmes managed academic standards and the quality of the learning opportunities that were provided to students. I'm pleased to report that in a very positive review and a very positive report, the agency confirmed their confidence in the way these were carried out. The last year also saw our institution's policy framework come to fruition. Introduced two years ago by the university to govern its relationship with the teaching institutions, teaching institutions in which many of you will have studied, it has already seen a substantial increase in the university's engagement with them. I'm confident that due in no small measure to the success of this framework, many more of these institutions are represented here today and will go on to attend the two-day workshop at Cumberland Lodge in Windsor later this week. The largest of the 69 independent teaching institutions within the framework is the Singapore Institute of Management. And I'm pleased to announce that over our 25-year relationship with the Singapore Institute of Management, which we celebrated last year, more than 15,000 of its students have graduated with the University of London Award. And like the Singapore Institute of Management, all the other 68 institutions have a good story to tell of the way in which it works with the university to support our students. Student support has been further enhanced by international programmes through a £12 million investment in a new IT infrastructure to manage the entire student life cycle, from their initial contacts with us through to their becoming alumni on graduation. Although the project is due for completion in May this year, it has already made a noticeable difference in the services we offer students, 
of whom there are currently more than 50,000 in over 180 countries. Our students are working on more than 100 study programmes that range from finance to public health, from information security to petroleum geoscience. The world in the years to come will be driven by its knowledge economy and those with education and skills will excel in it. It is the goal of international programmes to play a leading role in creating that global knowledge economy, in providing the excellent opportunities of the University of London to young people and to not so young people across the world. For those of you graduating today with a University of London degree, like your many predecessors, the degree is the key to new and exciting career opportunities. Having celebrated International Women's Day only last week, I am proud to emphasise the University of London's role in the empowerment of women. In 1878, the University of London became the first university in the UK to admit women to its degrees. Widening access to higher education lies at the heart of the international programme's agenda, and this has enabled women from all over the world to experience a life-changing education. Two key examples come to mind amongst many. Gisela Stewart, a Member of Parliament here in the UK, says that without her international programme's LLB, she would never have become an MP. And, even more prominently, Luisa Diogo, a financial economist, went on to become the first woman Prime Minister of Mozambique between 2004 and 2010. Having graduated from the University of London, both women have gone on to see their lives change. But more importantly, they've had an impact on the lives of others, both locally, nationally and internationally. Others of our graduates have also risen to remarkable heights. Amongst them are seven Nobel Prize winners who prove that the opportunities offered by international programmes can lead to success on an outstanding scale. The two latest additions to the list of Nobel Prize winners who had studied through what was then the external system are Dr Rolf Paye, who was lead author of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and jointly shared the Nobel Peace Prize with former US Vice President Al Gore, and Dr Charles Cow joint winner of the 2009 Nobel Prize in Physics for groundbreaking achievements concerning the transmission of light and fibres for optical communication. These Nobel Prize winners stand at a pinnacle, but so many of our graduates play key roles in their chosen fields. We've been proud over the years to enable people across the world who did not have access to high quality university education, for whatever reason, to study for degrees. For most, it has created opportunities for their own personal progress. But for some, it has provided the hope of education in the face of inequality and oppression. Most prominent amongst these was Nelson Mandela, who for many of his 27 years imprisoned on Robben Island was studying law as a London external student. Although he passed the London inter Intermediate Examinations in 1963, the conditions set by the South African authorities prevented him from completing his degree. And Nelson Mandela is only the most famous of many people for whom studying in this way has helped them insist on their humanity in the face of oppression. I congratulate you all on achieving your degrees. This success will benefit you and all the countries, communities and professions that you represent. It will also benefit, if I may say so, the world as a whole. We live in a global village beset by economic problems, by political tensions, and by global inequalities. Having more people with university degrees will not solve these problems on its own, but it will support the economic opportunities that will raise people's standard of living across the world. And it will create the understanding and tolerance that is one of the bases of the harmonious and more equal and just world in which we all want to live. Graduates are not just ambitious, they are also educated, thoughtful and reflective. Their ambitions should extend not just to themselves and their families, but to the wider world for which we all have a responsibility. You are all leaving today with degrees from an outstanding university. You are superbly prepared for further study and for the careers on which you are all embarking. You have exciting futures ahead of you. And as graduates of the University of London, doors will open because of the high reputation of your qualification. But I hope that you will also carry with you the responsibilities of all those educated at university in a world where the great majority of people do not have that privilege. And that responsibility is, above all, 
to ensure that you use your knowledge, your understanding, and your capacity for critical analysis, not only to enhance your own careers, important as those are, but to help make the world a better and more equitable place for all who live in it. Your knowledge has been hard won, and you should be proud of it. My plea to all of you graduating today is that you use that knowledge well. Our graduates are an integral part of our unique global network, the community of the University of London's international programmes graduates right across the world. A small part of that community is present today, and the newest part. Many of you will have followed a programme of study through international programmes because you were inspired to do so by other students and graduates whom you knew. And you too will spread the word about the importance of international programmes to others in the future. The 800 students graduating at today's two ceremonies, a remarkable number and testimony to the commitment of you all to the importance of your degree, will become members of the ever-expanding International Programmes Alumni Association. And with it, members of this distinguished 150-year-old community. Your journey to this point will not have been easy. I know that for all of you, it represents a long and sustained commitment to a programme of study, often carried out under circumstances that were not ideal and may often have been very difficult. Some of you have had to remain in full-time work while studying. Others have had family or dependents to look after. We must not forget those of you who have had to study completely by yourselves with little or no tutored support. It is for these reasons that, alongside all of those in the University of London, I'm very proud indeed to see you all here today waiting to be presented, and I'm also full of admiration for what you have achieved. And today is also, of course, a celebration of the parents, the partners, the children and the friends of those graduating, the people who've supported you in so many ways throughout your studies. I'm delighted that so many of them have made the journey to be here today and to celebrate their achievements. It can be difficult for those closest to you. I know that they all rejoice in your success, but I suspect that many of them will also be breathing a deep sigh of relief that it's finally over. Since taking over as Vice-Chancellor of the University of London in September 2010, I've had the pleasure of travelling to degree ceremonies in many parts of the world. But the ceremony here in London is always a special one, because it takes place at the heart of the city where the great University of London has its home. And I'm pleased that yesterday many of you were able to visit our home in Senate House through the organised tours, which I hope you found informative and enjoyable. And I was pleased to be able to meet some of you at the alumni reception later uh, yesterday evening. As Vice-Chancellor, I am delighted to be here today to congratulate you and to wish you all success during the next phase of your journey as a graduate of the University of London. I hope that you are proud of your University of London degree, as we are proud of you all for having earned it. Thank you. <laughs>